Okay guys, so today I am installing the Mustangs to Fear uh, 6768 Fastback Trunk Kit. So I, I pre-fitted this stuff a while back before I painted the car, but now that everything's getting buttoned up and I have all my, my taillight wiring done, it's time to go ahead and install this for good. So excuse the mess in the garage, but this is everything that comes in the box, all the parts laid out. Um, I did have to cut these side panels because I'm using the stock tail lights. They make theirs straight down. So if you're using the Shelby style tail lights, it still fills, but no big deal. It took a couple of minutes. So here is the, the back panel. That's what you'll see when you look in the trunk. Is the panels that cover the tail light. Uh, I think the box is empty, but that's the big box that will show up at your door for everything. And then the bottom side here uh, comes with two pieces of wood that you put in and screw together and then that makes your floor. And this is perfect if you're running a uh, fuel injected tank setup like I have, the Holley Sniper tank sink setup. So my tank and my lines are coming out of the top of the tank. So obviously you don't want to sit stuff on top of there. Having this floor gives you that protection that there's probably about a three inch gap now between the floor and the top of the tank. And once it's all bolted together, it's actually pretty solid. Um, I am mounting my battery in the trunk too, so I had to cut a hole in the wood here where I have my, my ground strap coming through and then I have my, my two mounting holes for the battery box. So I'll take a couple of videos here throughout the day and try to put them all together so you guys can see how the install of this setup works. Okay, so once you have the, the bottom the flat plywood in, they have these panels here, these, these boards, and you can see they're all marked. They were pre-installed on the board when I got them and it's great for pre-fitting. Everything was pre-drilled, pre-marked. You could tell that these guys actually put it together in a car and made sure everything fit before they shipped it, which is awesome. I, I can say that everything I've bought from, from Rich and Michelle at Mustangs to Fear has fit perfect, no issues. Uh, they make a great product, highly recommended. So anyways, um, now that the carpet's laid down, you can reinstall these and that's, that's what holds your carpet in place. It kind of sandwiches it in there. And this will also stiffen, stiffen the floor up, having that board across there. And next we're gonna attach this backer board to that piece and that's gonna be covered by your main panel here. Um, so we'll do that next. Okay, I've got all the wood trim mounted now. Um, the backer board not only mounted down here, but I also have it mounted up there. So now when you push on the floor, it's nice and tight. So no problems with actually using the trunk to, to store things. Um, now we'll start putting the plastic panels in. All right, the back panel is installed. Um, obviously that's the one you want to do first. And fit in there really nice. I did have to trim a little bit right here on both sides for the hinges. Now I've done a lot of work on my car. So most likely maybe my hinges were tweaked a little bit and that's why it didn't fit, but not a big deal. Just took a little air grinder to it and opened it up and it popped right in. Uh, now I'm gonna put both of the side panels on and then the taillight panels go in last. Now when these panels go in, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had to trim the corner here for the taillight housing. I also made a notch here for my power wire to come in from, from the engine bay because uh, I am mounting the battery box there. But you can see there's Velcro along the back edge and along the bottom edge. That's all that holds it in place. You've got a Velcro strip on your back panel and a Velcro strip on here. So this is just gonna get pushed into place and, and sealed with the Velcro. Okay, I got the side panels installed now. They fit really nice. Again, there's just a uh, Velcro in the back here and Velcro on the board that's mounted to the floor back there and then they just they just float up here but they're they're pretty stiff so there's no worry about them flopping around or anything like that everything looks pretty solid in there now I'll get to the taillight panels okay so I got the, the taillight panels installed uh, I did have to make it's kind of hard to see here but where you have your your tabs in the metal that hold the wiring up, I did have to make little notches in the plastic so that this would fit up nice and tight. And then put three trim screws in there to attach it to here so that nothing moves. Did the same thing on the passenger side. So now all that's left is 
the panel that covers the filler neck, which is right here. And it's, it's pre-dimpled for a couple of holes to hold it in place. So uh, it just pops right right in here. Now I may have to trim a little bit. Let's see what's going on. There it goes. So that fits nice and tight. I just need to put the mounting screws in and then we're all wrapped up. Okay, everything's installed. Uh, the fit and finish is really nice. I'm really happy with the way it came out. It looks good. Um, now all I have left to do is mount my battery box, which I've already done. I just, you know, holes are there, everything's ready to go. I just need to put it back in and then the trunk is finished. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, make sure you like and subscribe on the videos. Thanks. So after installing the Mustang Stafir Fastback trunk setup today, I got my Taylor battery box in. Um, I've had all this pre-wired and pre-set up, mocked up before paint, so this is now just the final assembly, but I want to show you guys how I routed everything. Um, if you watch the video for the, the trunk install, you'll see where I had my, my ground going down into the frame rail, which Get under here, if you can see it. There is my frame ground with a with a heavy um, threaded nut cert coming through the frame. And then my battery box bolts coming down through. And then the power's running up to the, the starter in the engine bay. So how I wired this was I wanted the kill switch. Uh, I didn't want to put it on the outside. It's, it's not a race car. I'm not going for any uh, like any HRA specs or anything, but for when it's parked in the garage, really when it's sitting anywhere, anti-theft, just I wanted the, the shut off there. So I mounted that straight to the box. But because the car is fuel injected, you have your memory for your computer, you have your radio clock, your presets, all that stuff. I didn't want to lose that every time. So what I did was I just bridged a little five amp fuse and I did put the cutoff on the on the negative side um, I just put a little five amp fuse in line there so what that will do is when that key is off there's still enough power going through to keep memory in the computer keep all my radio presets um, but if there was a large jaw if there was a short somewhere or if somebody tried to start it then it's just gonna blow that fuse and you have no more connection no big deal but saves you from having to mess with your radio or, or you lose your computer settings every time you turn the battery off. So that's just a nice little tip. And then just keep a couple spare five amp fuses in the glove box. Uh, that's it.